Oaxaca Sharks and Puerto Escondido in uh, the state of Oaxaca. Um, we're playing in the Sipo de Baca League down there, so um, I'll be down there for four months for, for one season. Uh, I'll be my first professional season. Um, so after Crystal, I played four years of college basketball, two years at Three Rivers, uh, a semester at Southwest Baptist University, and then my senior year at Southeast Missouri State. Uh, since then, I've been uh, coaching basketball. I've coached one season at Gateway Science Academy and three seasons at Northwest uh, High School. I was a JV coach there. Uh, during that time, I've been playing semi-pro basketball with uh, the St. Louis Trotters. Uh, to kind of fill that void the last four years in between me making this jump to go play professional basketball. Um, but really in the meantime I've just been, been coaching and I, I've been doing some personal training and uh, just trying to keep myself in shape as much as possible. And, you know, fitness and basketball is really my passion so, you know, I've, it's, it's never really been too difficult for me. That's what I love to do. So. Just staying ready, and I'm just very thankful I got an opportunity. So, oh, go, oh, go ahead. ahead. Well, I, so go ahead, McVay. We, we've got some young young followers, young viewers, some high school age kids. If you can, go back and talk to us, because for those that, that don't know or don't remember, I mean, we're talking one of the premier players, if not the premier player in the JCC at that time. And so tell us a little bit about what you went through with the recruiting process, how you ended, ended up at, at Three Rivers, and, and maybe any pointers that you might have for these high school kids that are, that are looking to go to the next level. So for me out of high school, uh, mainly my main recruitment was uh, a couple Division II schools, and my only offers came from junior colleges. So I had an offer to uh, Mineral Area, State Fair, and then Three Rivers Community College. Oh, and uh, St. Louis Community College as well. But, um, you know, for me, when I got offered by Gene Best, you know, being the winningest coach in college basketball history, it was it was pretty much an easy easy pick for me. Um, what, what, what was it like playing for Coach Best? I'm, I'm a Three Rivers alum. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I, I always wish I could. I just wasn't very good. I, I knew Chris would be interested in well, this. I, I am. I mean, I, I know a lot of guys who played for Coach Best, like Nick Man. Nimchek, Cecil Sprewell. I knew all those guys, yeah. Travis Johnson, guys when I was in school. But, you know, it, it, Coach Best is – uh, he, I mean, he ran, he ran some good practices. And yeah, he, he did, man. It was, you know, it was nothing. I was, I wasn't prepared for it. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't prepared. I, you know, we we'd have three a days most of the time. We'd go to the gym, get a workout in, go lift, and then, or most of the time we go run, and then we come back and lift, and then we go play. You know, so it was just all day. Everything, everything with him was old school style. You know? I, I, I hope some of the young guys are listening. Like I wish some of my players were listening. Notice he said, "Run, lift, then play," because yeah. because there's a lot of kids out there that think you don't have to get in the weight room, you don't have to work on those things to be out there at the college level. Yeah, man, it was. It was a complete <laughs> shock for me, man. Especially <laughs> Full-time job, I bet, right? Full-time I mean, job, you know, and then, and then I had class on top of that, and you're trying to work in a nap during the day because you're a college kid, <laughs> you're tired, <laughs> you know, and it's just kind of, it's all caught up to you, man. You're getting exhausted, and, uh, you know, it was tough, man. It was, we had this place called Bacon Park. Um, he'd take us out there, and the only way you get to start practice is if you – finish this three and a half mile run in the middle of the heat you know <laughs> typically after a weight session and you know it was it was brutal man he, he didn't there was no shortcuts for gene best did, that's for sure now did you guys did he have you guys still wearing those white garden gloves doing all your ball handling like yep. pre-practice stuff yep my kids are like coach why do we ever do that i said i'm telling you right now if you can dribble with these damn garden gloves on you, you can dribble the ball yeah, we weren't allowed to walk out of the locker room. We'd have these goggles on that, you know, it blocked your vision from looking down. <laughs> and we'd have white gloves on that made the ball slick. Uh -huh. And you had to do that. That is old school, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You'd have to run around. I can't remember how many times you ran around the court, but that was your warm up, you know, because we'd have like an hour session where we just do skill work in the morning. And that was our warm up. So we'd get, get some laughs in, you know, you're. 
you're still tired in the morning, you're still running around with these gloves on and goggles, you can't see anything. <laughs> so it was tough, man, but great experience though, for sure. It's awesome. Yeah, I, I looked up some stats. You averaged 8.7 points a game, I think, down at Three Rivers. And, uh, man, it sounds like you earned every every point. Yeah, it was uh, it was tough. It, you know, that's another thing I would say to the kids in, in, junior, in high school, you know. They always want to shy away and try to go to the highest level, you know, play Division Two or Division One right out of high school. Some of the best players that I, I ever played against were in junior college, for sure. A lot of Division One guys, a lot of high-level Division One or Division Two guys. Um, really good basketball at that level, man. And you know, it's it's tough that league, especially Region 16. You know, we got Miller Area, West Plains, um, State Fair. You know, all those guys. It's it's tough competition, and everything's earned there. So, so you go from there, you transfer over to Southwest Baptist down in Bolivar. Uh, or outside of Bolivar, and then tell us about that experience, and then going from that to the to the big leagues at D1 down to SEMO. Southwest Baptist was different for me, man, because we, you know, we'd have chapel every day that we had to go to. That was a different experience for me. Um, definitely a good experience. You know, it was something different that I had never been through. Um, coach uh, Clark Sheehy was my coach down there. He uh, he was one of those guys, you know that. He worked us hard too, you know. He he pushed us out of our comfort zone almost every day. Um, I got to play with a, uh, my assistant coach. Actually, was uh, Ben Simmons' brother. Oh. Um, we ended up playing LSU at LSU in Baton Rouge, um, our first game actually, preseason game. But um, you know, it was a great experience down there. I had a couple good games, a couple uh, double-digit scoring games, but. You know, I could have stayed there and finished out my senior year, and I think I could have done, you know, had a pretty good season my senior year, finished out my junior year there, junior year there as well. But uh, I was just ready to make that move. I had an opportunity to play Division One, so I wanted to go ahead and go ahead and do that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Test that. What what experience is that like? I mean, you know, whether whether it's us old guys or whether it's the the young kids still in school you know you always had that dream about going d1 and what life's like i mean what what's life like for a d1 athlete it's you know it's different man it was definitely different from any level all the other levels i was at um you know just the media standpoint yeah. you know the gear that we were getting uh signing autographs, you know, sitting around signing autographs, just doing little things like that. Uh, even the atmosphere, being in the OVC, um, you know, it was it was a cool experience, man. I mean, got to play for Coach Rick Ray. He's uh, Colorado's um, assistant coach now. So it was wow. it was a cool experience, man. I got to – my assistant coach there, Adam Gordon, uh, is the Rising Coaches Association owner. So he's – actually going to probably help me try to do some more coaching in, in the future and kind of connect me in with some people but just the connections and everything that I built and relationships with the my, my teammates and stuff I had two uh, two teammates actually this year that are playing in the G League and then uh, Antonius Cleveland was a senior when I was there he played with uh, the Mavericks and he played in Atlanta for a little while so I got to be around some NBA players you know, some guest speakers that were pretty cool that I got to be around, but this is an overall really good experience. So, so, okay. I mean, if everybody, we, we had a little sound issue at first, just so everybody knows, we're with Eli Sample, former Crystal City standout, um, who's now going and playing professional ball in Mexico. Correct. I, mean, I got. I read the notes. So I, I'm like Jason. I read the notes. <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, I got it right here. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. Well, I mean, yeah, hey, 14 hey, as a right, sophomore, right. 22 as a junior. I do have one 19 question. 19 as a senior. I I know plenty. I'm glad you do. I, I have one question. Can Ben Simmons' brother shoot free throws better than his brother? <laughs> For sure. All right. All right. I just wanted to ask that question because I. I mean, I. Those are some really funny memes, man. I mean, yeah. It's, it's pretty tough. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Yeah, he was his, his brother was a good player too. Nothing like Ben, but you know, you don't realize how big Ben really is until you're up next to him, man. He's humongous. He's huge. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's about six ten. I mean, forearms are huge. He's a big boy. So, well, and I I don't think kids in Jefferson County realize what 
a D1 athlete like that looks like. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and, and what the difference is of playing with someone like that. Uh, we went and played St. Mary's in football recently, and they got a kid that's going to uh, Arizona State. And man, when he touches the ball, it's just a different. It's just a different thing. It goes back to Brian Allen days. Oh, Maple yeah. Wood on, on whether it's the football field or, or well, Brian or. Allen, you go in the locker room down. You know, we're down seven, and then he touches it. Or we may have been seven six, whatever it was, and then he touches it four times in the second half, and all four are touchdowns. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. uh, Division One athletes are a little different, yeah. and uh, it cracks me up. You get, and even when. Eli was at Crystal. These kids talking about, I got a letter from this. I got a letter. Like, guys, you're not at that level. <laughs> they don't understand what it takes to be at that level. So, I, you know, you, you talk about the last decade. We'll, we'll talk about the last decade of, of athletes that if you said, hey, let's go, let's go spend your money to go watch one guy play. There's about three guys in the last decade that you're going to say, this, this is worth spending money to go see. Sprinkle from down in North County. Hey, I mean, just to watch him shoot and watch him create and do what he does. Klaus, I think, out at Grandview. He was okay. worth the price of admission. And Eli, I, I, white chocolate. That's what I always call it. white chocolate. <laughs> and, and the reason why is he, just like Klaus, or maybe vice versa here, you're always so smooth. You know, you talk about athletes being silky smooth. Is that I wanted to know, and now that we get a chance to talk to you, is that something that you worked into, or is that just natural? Because I'll be honest with you, if you ever watched him play, it was just different. It was just flat out different. And, and you know, our guys are, are just kind of robotic, and you're just so smooth on the on the court. Is, is that something that was just natural, or something that you worked on? You know, I think uh, a lot of it just came from me just being a gym rat and always being in the gym. Um, I think I got some natural ability, you know, blessed from my, my family. My, my grandpa was a professional football player. He, he got drafted to the Green Bay Packers. Um, I think I got some athletic ability from him, but for the most part, I think it came from me just being a gym rat and staying in the gym, you know, and always working on my craft. and. Uh, just those reps that I put in over time, just adding up, and you know, I think that kind of translated to me just being smoother with the basketball and smoother out on the court. And uh, how how did that help you translate as a coach? Since most of the, you know, I don't know that even a lot of your athletes knew the type of player you were, and uh, like me, I was I got to witness it. Uh, I knew what you could do on the on the court, and uh, how was that? Could you did you ever you know grab the ball once in a while, practice, and you know <laughs> maybe maybe show them a thing or two? For, or? Sure. <laughs> For sure, we played a few times. You know, I'd go scrimmage with them. I play one on one with the guys every once in a while. Um, <laughs> one on one wasn't very fun for him, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know I had fun scrimmaging with the guys every once in a while. But you know. Especially things I got from, you know, from Coach Bess and Rick Ray. I used some of the drills that those guys gave me and, uh, you know, ball handling drills. It's all just a bunch of different ideas that I got from the coaches I kind of tried to bring in and use to make my own, you know, coaching situation. So um, I definitely used the ideas and some of the things that I learned along my journey playing and try to make that and translate it to my own coaching uh technique so well I want to know you know you were at school with this guy how is he as a teacher that's what that's what all, all our viewers are yeah, like, oh, what's what's oh, 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 teacher yeah. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> this I said for him a long time ago did you <laughs> yeah yeah I said for you well I yeah. remember that oh, it's because you weren't there <laughs> <laughs> I, I usually know who my sub, who my subs are. I didn't know they hired subs like you over there. Hey, I mean, hey. What can I say? Did, 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 did you did you roll the TV card in and put the TV card was used back then? Yeah, I was gonna say that was a long, a long time. Yeah, ago. I don't know. Eli, did you have me for any classes? I did. I did. I think it was a government class I had. Oh, oh yeah. So, oh, so, yeah. So did you learn anything? <laughs> Be yeah, honest. It's okay. You're older now. So <laughs> he, can't, he can't put you. He can't yeah, yeah, give you detention yeah. or anything. <laughs> you know, I've, 
There might be a couple things that I, I, I might learn. <laughs> Shoot, I'm but sure you learned about the 19th Amendment, and I, I mean, think you know. there's, there's some of the stuff that I, I, I learned. But, you know, but, it's a little foggy now. <laughs> there were some other amendments in there too, Jason. Just, oh, really? Well, I just probably the 19th. I thought it was not very the first 10 one. don't count or anything, yeah. but you know. Man, I, I was a little young back then too, you know. I can remember we got to. Uh, before I was really old, but <laughs> we used to scrimmage sometimes with them too a little bit over there. They'd whoop my butt, but that was a, it was, that was, that was always group. fun. That, that was a fun group. I mean, just think of think of your class. Now think of this class in a small, small Crystal City, little two A three A school. You got professional. You got professional baseball player for a while with Winkleman. Well, and they were teammates. And they I were mean, teammates. Yeah. I mean, just that watching those games were fun. I mean, you you throw in, you know, Rockweiler. But then um, you throw in Stacy Thornton, who went down to Southwest Missouri State and played mm-hmm. football. I mean, mm-hmm. that, we we Ryan had a DeGear. string of at, at yeah. Ryan DeGear, yeah. and we had a string of athletes yeah. there even before him, mm-hmm. and then during his time. That mm-hmm. it was it was a it was a fun. I had a. Football, some of the best baseball, man. Yeah, it, some of the best was, years of my teaching career were those ten years I was at Crystal. Something I don't think people realize with, with my Crystal team, my senior years, we had ten seniors, ten seniors on my team my senior year, which is I don't know if there's ever been a group like that since, at least. No. I, well, and especially at, at Crystal, I mean, yeah. you know, and this was the last group. I mean, our seven built their high school, and they were the last. Basically, class that we had that we had our seven students mixed in with those Crystal City students. TMR seven. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say that out loud, but I mean, you know, <laughs> I don't care. I would have never left Crystal, probably, but you know, things happen for a reason. Yeah, that's right. I never thought I'd dream to be a bas- head basketball coach either. Ken Jones used to always coach me or te- tease me when I was over there because I wanted to be a head football coach so bad and he's like you're going to be a girls basketball coach before you ever become that head football coach. <laughs> and I just kind of one upped him and became a boys basketball coach instead. But, oh, if know. Blair had a mic on I'm sure he'd want to say something about that. Hey, you want to use mine and say something? What do you something? mean? I mean, it, <laughs> it's mean? the truth. I'm not no offense. I mean uh, I couldn't have took well, over. I said for, with all due respect. Uh, yeah, I mean they got a well established guy in, in Blair over there when I got hired. It wasn't like I was trying for the girls side. Yeah. I actually was offered to coach on Blair's staff and turned it down. Oh, oh man. man. He's been trying to fill the void. Oh, yes. He has. <laughs> <laughs> he has. <laughs> Sorry, Boar. Yeah. But, but Eli, going forward, what, what are some of the things that you're going to have to go through now you've signed your contract? So going forward, whether it's Thanksgiving over the holiday break or whether it's going into December. What's ask him what ask him what the beach is like at where he's going. Now, it's that? like one of the better places. It is. It's I think it's like it's one of the top, like top seven I think is what I what I one read. Of the top seven beaches in Mexico. Hey. Good so for it's, him. Yeah. <laughs> it's known well for, played. Uh, yeah, it's it's known for its <laughs> nightlife and its beaches. Uh, uh, your agent was looking out for you. <laughs> yeah, he really was. He was. So oh. it's it's a blessing, man. But I'm gonna have to be smart while I'm down there, man. Uh, you never, you know, you're thousands of miles away from home. You never know who's trying to set you up, or you know, I'm I'm gonna stay sick, stick out like a sore thumb down there too. So don't, don't drink water from the tap. <laughs> that's, that's another thing too. Yeah. I've never been to Mexico. I just know people who have. And, and, well, and, don't get in any taxes either. Well, tell us how this <laughs> came about then. I mean, how did you get in touch with this team or end up getting this contract? Um, so I ran into an agent uh, named Luis Martinez. Uh, There's somebody I kind of connected with She's through social media. Uh, he pointed me in the right direction um, to the owner and a couple to a couple teams down there and then the owner of the league um, I actually got in contact with him he reached back out to me um, I also talked to another agent Jared Etheridge who uh, kind of helped me you know he helped me pretty much give me a good you know he, he said good things for me yeah um, 
and then I just sent to my I sent the owner of the league and the team uh, my resume, my uh, film, my college film, my my film from the pro am this summer, um, film from the Trotters. You know, he didn't get back to me for a couple weeks. Uh, finally got back to me and said, you know what, we're, we're going to give you a contract and we want you to come down and play for us. You know, and I, that's something I've tried to do for, for years now, trying to get connected with a team, you know. and Obviously, not, nothing came through, so, you know, it, it was just a blessing to, to finally get an opportunity, man, and get a, get a chance to play, so. It's awesome. Yeah. Not, yeah not, I mean, it's just not a lot of people from Jefferson County going and playing mm -hmm. professional basketball. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have a, a start time that you're going to head out? Yeah, I leave next Friday, oh, November nice. 26th. What? Hey, at least you get to celebrate Thanksgiving with the family before, and yep. and then uh, then head head right out. So is the season is when's the season going to start? Are they playing right now, or is it? No, uh, they're not playing yet. So the okay. season I think starts I think the second week of December. So I got about two weeks to kind of settle in and get ready to go, mm -hmm. and then I think the season goes to about the beginning of April. Twenty twenty five games. I'm not exactly sure with mm -hmm. playoffs and everything, mm -hmm. but. Um, you know, we won't be working every day either. So, you know, there'll be times where I kind of just can explore Mexico a little bit. I'll, I'll be in different parts of Mexico, uh, mainly in the state of Oaxaca, but I think we go outside of the state a couple times as well. Um, so there's 13 teams in, in this pro league. So uh, <coughs> there's two imports on each team. So I will be with another, I guess it'll be an American. Mm -hmm. It might be a guy from another another country. But typically in most pro leagues, they only get two imports really? per, you know, per team. Mm -hmm. so. so so, with that being said, how good is your Spanish? <laughs> yeah, I was wondering that, too. And not El very good. El Nino is Spanish for the Nino. <laughs> yeah, not. You didn't take Senor's class over there, Crystal, did you? I did. I did take oh, it, but I didn't take it. paid more attention. Didn't take it very seriously, no. <laughs> <laughs> that Rosetta Stone is going to be really uh, important. Yeah, yeah. Google so Translate. I got it downloaded, ready to go. So, uh, <laughs> so I'm gonna need it, a little man. slower. <laughs> I, I yeah, I couldn't imagine. I couldn't <laughs> imagine. I, that, I, that would be no. my where I would be like, oh. Does Does the team have anything in place for for guys who are imports? You know, for the language barrier. As far as I know, you know, they're all Mexican too, so they probably don't know a whole lot of English. So it's gonna be a lot of hand gestures and. <laughs> Uh, you Be know, careful it's, it's, on those. Yeah, yeah, I know. I've been warned about that too. So I'm. Yep. <laughs> Chris has been teed up for those before. Yeah. <laughs> Not hand gestures. Usually the things I say. No. <laughs> Let's get that straight. No fake news here. It's going to be really tough because I got to go to Mexico City and. Then I got to figure out, you know, how to get to Puerto Escondido from to the airport, and when I get to Puerto Escondido. I got to take a, a two-hour bus ride, you know, to go meet up with the the owner of the league and everything. And oh it's, boy! <laughs> it's all going to be in Spanish, so yeah. you know it's going to be it's going to be tough for me, but it's going to be an experience. It's going to be an experience. Oh, yeah. And uh, awesome. H have you had a chance to either talk with the coach, players, front office? Any any? No, he doesn't speak Spanish, Zach. I, I had a chance to, not a chance to. I've talked to, I've talked to the coach, um, obviously just through text, not on the phone. Okay. Um, just because he speaks, he speaks Spanish, you know, and but we've been able to communicate and kind of figure out what his his plan is for me. Uh, so I kind of got an idea what what my plan is, and you know I'm trying to go average 20 a game, you know, come off come off screens, make plays. Uh, be aggressive. So, um, thinking about having you at the two, at the two spot, or gonna have you at the little bit of one and two, a little bit of one and two. So I'll, I'll bring the ball up, and then uh, if I get it, I'm going with it. You know, that's gonna be my plan. You know, I'm gonna be a good, I'm gonna be a team player. You know, I've always been able to pass the ball pretty well, I think. So I want to win and 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 do well at the same time. That's my goal. So go down and win as many games as I can and produce on the court so that's awesome man yeah <laughs> I want I want to know because we're all we're all pretty good friends with with Breeze what was it like uh, 
play, yeah, play, play, like play let's hear some story. Let's hear some stories about Coach Breeze that you know. I'm sure he'd love to hear. <laughs> You know, I, I love playing for Coach Breeze, man. I really did. He uh, he never took it easy on me. He never took it easy on me, man, because I think he knew what kind of player I could be. You know, um, you know, it was it was it was tough. You know, I mean, he didn't take it easy on on us in practice. He worked us hard. Um, you know, there was no shortcuts with Coach Breeze for sure. But I always wanted, you know, I always wanted to make Coach Breeze proud, you know. I always wanted to feel like I was his best player that he's ever had. You know, that's what I wanted to be for myself, for him, you know. I, you know, I looked up to him a lot in a lot of ways. Um, you know, he was always that cool, funny guy that everybody wanted to be around. So, you know, he was just, he just had that aura about him, you know, that, you know. And uh, I love playing for him, you know. We won a lot of games together, did a lot of good things together, and uh, some of my fondest memories of playing basketball, definitely playing at Crystal City for Coach Breeze. And that's that's 100% for sure, you know. And nothing can match my, my group with my high school boys and playing for Coach Breeze, you know. That's another thing, going back to your thing about saying stuff to the high school kids, you know, there is no bragging rights like, your high school days you know what i'm saying oh yeah you know there <laughs> is no bragging sure. rights like that so the guys that are just kind of taking it as it is you know i would second you know second guess that and start taking it seriously because it's going to carry you wherever you go mm -hmm. yeah so definitely uh playing for coach breeze at crystal was some of my best basketball memories ever hey it's fun fact coach breeze Showing Coach Breeze's age here. <laughs> He's old enough that he coached him, and he also coached me at one time. <laughs> just putting that out just there. putting that out there. <laughs> yes. Well, I was just an AAU bullcrap team, but hey, still. Still, still, still coach. There was a Breeze that was playing on the team that would never pass. That was something about Breeze's. But anyway. <laughs> shoot, shoot is going to shoot, right? The Jarvis's were the same way. That's why we, that's why we don't get along very well. <laughs> Well, well, Eli, we want to say, you know, thank you so much for coming on the show with us, and, and we appreciate you just kind of telling us your story, and, and it's great, once again, to always have uh, Crystal City alums on, on oh the show. Oh, boy, here we um, go. Three, three River alum, Hey, two, I'm good with that, but, uh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll, uh, Kevin, we'll, we'll take it out here. We'll take a break, and uh, we'll see you guys here in a little bit. All right. Uh-oh. and even help with dust in your house. They install easily in less than 45 minutes, and it's invaluable for the rest of your life. If you're interested in any of the products they offer, you can phone by SMCI call today at 636-337-4444 or email them at service at homebysmci.com. Are you looking to buy or sell a home? If so, contact Stacy Miller at Berkshire Hathaway Home Services. Stacy works with first-time home buyers and even savvy sellers. She also specializes in working with investors, lenders, and title companies. Stacy will be there every step of the way. Contact her today at 314-606-1007 or visit stacyzmiller.com. No time to eat in? No problem. Don't feel like cooking? We'll do it for you. Need wings for your party? TJ's Bar and Grill has got you covered. TJ's is a local mom and pop establishment in Peafley, Missouri, known for their own homemade pizza sauce, barbecue sauce, and their famous TJ's wing sauce. Open seven days a week, they are family friendly, biker friendly, and locally owned. Come by or order by phone with your credit card at 636 475 3648. TJ's Bar and Grill. We're glad you stopped by. Roses are red, violets are blue. Whether you're buying or selling a home, let Kelly Kaufman move you. 
Kelly Kaufman of Real Living Gateway Real Estate brings a fresh approach with an honest, innovative, aggressive, and junk fee experience for all her customers. Whether you're a first-time buyer or experienced seller, Kelly Kaufman has the tools to deliver the best client experience in the industry. Give Kelly a call today at 314-221-6090 and let her All right, and we're back here at the Coach's Box. Uh, I want to say thanks again to Herculaneum La Pachanga for, as always, allowing us to come and, and take up some of their time and, and some of their uh, restaurant spots here for us to have the show. So thank you. Shout out to Herculaneum La Pachanga. That uh, I obviously couldn't spell. You couldn't spell? No, I couldn't spell La it. Changa. Well, La Changa, he says. Well, that's La Changa. Why Stupid autocorrect. That's All why correct. I put Lapas on my... Uh, it's almost, like, it's almost like saying Coastal Carolina. <laughs> La Changa. Uh, almost. Almost. Not quite, though. But hey... Autocorrect. With, with this segment, we want to we want to kind of talk about the local scene as as Jarvis is just chewing on the chips here. Crunch, and, and crunch. Gonna, hey, we're hey, all hungry too. Hey, we he, all have practice. He too. got out of practice at eight o'clock. Exactly. We'll give it to him. He didn't oh, have a chance oh, to get over here and have a bite to eat. You know, but let's let's kind of talk about the uh, the local scene. We we've got working on that pious play. That's right. That pie, that oh yeah. The uh, it's called gonna, X. Gonna trade film. It's yeah. called X. He's already got my film. <laughs> <laughs> it's called X. 
So, but some big news locally. So last week we were talking about how uh, Jefferson R7 Volleyball, their girls, went went to the Final Four. Uh, talked about Festus Herculaneum winning at state and, and cross-country boys, uh, setting all those records. And the hits kind of keep on coming for Jefferson County because now we have another Jefferson County school that is going to the Final Four in is it? Is soccer. Do we? Do we? Yeah, in soccer. Kevin, I don't know if you can put on your shirt. I don't know if Kevin can put it on. He's got, but... Uh, St. Pius X High School boys boys soccer uh, made it is going to the final four this this weekend. This yeah, Friday playing Saturday. Friday. Good playing for them. Friday. I think I, I think Good I said Coach that Portel. my wife today. Yeah, yeah. And now, Kevin, you need to tell us. Did, did Perryville also? Yes. Perry, yeah. Perryville will also be playing in Class Two's final four. So St. Pius X is in Class One, yes. and then Perryville also part of the conference is playing in Class Two. So. And, and Perry, both, both programs have been very, very good for a while. And, and I know, like I said, being down in North County, that was always an opponent that North County soccer was always worried about. They all had some really good games. So uh, best of luck to both St. Pius X and Perryville teams. Well, Perryville's had what? They, they went to the Final Four in softball too, right? They did. So they, they've yeah. two, yeah. Yeah. two teams yeah. in the Final Four. Well, That's pretty, hey. pretty impressive. It, so St. Saint, Saint Pius is playing Fair uh, Grove. Fairgrove, right. and I, I think based on what Coach Portell and I talked to a couple of the kids, I, they they feel like they have a pretty good shot at, at that game. Now, of course, you get you, when you get to the Final Four, you Everybody's just never know. Up. Everybody's good. Everybody's good. Yep. Just depends. But if if they would win, they would most likely play Lutheran St. Charles, oh, who good. had to go to a double overtime to beat. Borgia? Oh, I'm sorry. Because, you know, in other sports, <laughs> in other sports, it's double overtime. So it's the penalty kicks to beat Borgia. I, mean, I would say it would be overtime, but well, whatever. Sudden death, right? Okay, so two overtimes, and then they did penalty kicks. My God, is this sport. Time, time. Hold on, this guy. Doesn't hockey do the exact same thing? It, now, ah! not, not, whoa, time out. In playoff hockey, in playoff hockey, you, you play, play until you someone actually scores. Right. Mm. Now, in the regular season, we just get that, that crap out of the way. Let's go. Okay, move on. we got to get on the plane and go somewhere else. Okay. Now, this is playoffs. All right. So, playoffs. he went to penalty kicks to beat Borgia, who St. Pius beat, one to nothing. Well, and now, at, at this point, you It throw, doesn't matter. It Anything doesn't out. Matter. Right. Throw it all out. Right. It, throw it all out. And, they, and, and I think St. Pius had, had a very good game against Brentwood. Uh, to make it to the final four, I think it was a seven, seven to one. Seven to, seven to one. So, Kevin, contest. if a team wins seven to one, what's that like? If we we're re relating it to basketball, would that be a kind of a turbo clock situation, close to it? It's, it's about five points per goal differential. <laughs> five <laughs> points per goal. God. I am not good right. at math. So, but I'm what you're saying? What you're saying is Zach McVay would be telling him to fall forward. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? You got the lead. Don't let anybody hurt. Why risk it? Well, you get one more goal. Sub. You go, you're up eight nothing. Right. It's uh, it's over. You know, is that what it is? Yeah. Hey, yeah. I still think we need that needs to be a rule in all of these other sports. I fall agree. forward? No, it fall we, forward rule. Yes. Fall that. Yeah, we can call it the fall forward rule where you you get to a certain score and okay, ball game's over. That's it. Cut it. That's a wrap. So how long has it been since Pius's soccer team's been to the final four, or have they? 2011. 2011, and they've been there four times. Okay. Five, six. Yes. Yeah, six that's times. right. I remember that. Coach Bohr was telling me six about that. Six times, them. and speaking of Coach Bohr, nobody name? had ever made it to the state championship game. Yep. They've only been semifinalists or have won third. Yep. Correct. Yes, so that is correct. So if they win, they will do something that Coach Kyle Bohr has never done. That's right. In all. And All Pius of his soccer greatness that I oh, have to hear geez. about every damn time <laughs> about the you us having a show on the same night as the men's soccer team. You and him both must. <laughs> well, you had to put it up there. He says, put "My name's yours. on that board up there, right there. Yeah, That's right, my name, right, 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 right there. there. Right there. It's like, okay, that's great. <laughs> Good for you. But so, no, I'm I'm really excited because I, I and now for me personally, okay, me a little selfishly. There are going to be a couple of kids that I'm literally going to coach two days More before you. More than a we... couple. More than a couple. Okay. So we're, we're, we're missing four varsity kids off the soccer awesome. team. 
<laughs> hey, wait. They'll all be there by the time we play you. Oh, we so need you to play that game. Do you say we need to yeah, play our game? We're definitely not yeah. moving it up. Right, you're right. So, but I've it got, almost I've got, was. I've got four varsity kids that, and and another JV kid. So I got five basketball players who are on that team, and I, I, I'm I'm super excited for them because no matter what, they're going to have an opportunity to, to to get their name on the wall and to do something that you know only a handful of teams have done. And of course, they're just by the they're like, "Coach, oh my gosh, I wish I was, you know, I wish I come to practice. Can I, can I just come in and do, um, no, no, you take care of business. Basketball will be here. Go enjoy that. Yeah, Go I mean, th- make memories. It, it, and what's great is the fact that it's it's local. You know, it's going to be up in Fenton, and so maybe knock on wood that that's an advantage because you get to sleep in. You know, you get. To sleep what are you doing over there? Dude, the thing is, it's hell, oh my it's killing my can't, head. You can't have jug, any, any jug. Head. jug head. Yeah. Hold it. Just hold it. Just, just, just I hold hate it. the new mics. Oh, my goodness. Gosh. Well, you know what? Darn it. No, but you, you talk about you're, you're playing close to home for, for the Final Four. You get to sleep in your bed. Uh, you know, you don't have to do all the extra travel if, if you're these other teams. So hopefully that kind of gives them maybe a little bit of an advantage going in. It's going to be a 10 a.m. ball game, so it's going to be nice and chilly. It'll be nice and chilly. You know, it's a shame they didn't get the weather that we've had the last couple of days. Right. But uh, it's going to be about – I talked to the kids and said, you all going to go to the game? Yeah, what time is it? I said it's 10 in the morning. Oh, what's is it going to be like today? <laughs> no, it's going to be about 40 degrees. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Can I, well, can I watch it online? <laughs> it's going to be sunny. So, it, no. But uh, best of luck to both St. Pius boys and uh, Perryville boys. Now on to well, – What about I, – I, you know, I, I, you guys have talked to yeah. Coach Portell and, you know, the, the experience for him, I, you know, something that I'm sure he's uh, pretty, pretty proud of, you know, as far as – being able to have this opportunity and you know you wonder always wonder how that translates uh you know from a a, from a a guy that's been a part of that program and a part of that school for a long time and never had that opportunity to to coach in a a final four state and alumni yeah so um you know tap your hat to him i mean what a what a great job he's done over there with that soccer program and uh you know he had some big shoes to fill (laughs) <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so, um, you know, Cappy had to him. I mean, uh, that guy was uh, one of the best uh, around, you know. And so, you, you definitely got to you got to tip your hat to Coach Portell and wish him the best of luck. I know, uh, you know, I know he's awful excited about. It. I sent him a text and, and told him congrats. And, and you know, I just think that you know, for for the whole standpoint of of our conference, I think that's awesome. But you know, more importantly for him, I mean, he's put a lot of time and effort and energy into that. Uh, to that school, but you know, more importantly, to that program, and you know, it's paying off for him. So, congrats to Coach Portell. Uh, and, and not only that, that evil there's sport. there's four other former players who 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 played at St. Pius who are who are coaching on the coaching staff. Yep. All, all all six soccer coaches in our building. Are six. Coaches. That sounds like is that a Coach Blair? Uh, staff? Man, that is a staff. <laughs> my gosh. You need an army, my friend. You need an army. Yeah. yeah. It would help if I didn't have this yeah. thing like tucked in. Oh, oh, what goodness. happened? Trying no, to get no, on Hey, mic. don't worry about it. You put that thing upside down. It <laughs> felt better. <laughs> they say it's upside all upside down. down. I hate these stupid things. Oh, oh, I'll just, all six coaches, soccer coaches that we have between the boys and the girls, because there's five on the boys' side, Portel and Scott Rudolph, Man, and myself are on the girls' side. All six of us played in the St. Pius program. Awesome. All of us played four folks. Mm-hmm. Uh, all of us will list folks as a coaching mentor sure. and someone that we have got learned a lot from and model a lot from. So um, it's pretty, you know, and then Bokes is kind of a distant guy. He doesn't want to take anything away from his coaching staff. If you were at the game, he actually was parked across the street at Sir Dyke sitting in his car watching the game. Oh, wow. Because um, he, he doesn't want to be, well, he doesn't want to be around crowds of parents. Um, <laughs> I can understand. So feeling. He doesn't want to be there, and he doesn't. Oh, oh no, he don't want to pay the fifty thousand dollars for a ticket. The field's named after him. We would have let him in free. Okay, well, but hear that mission. Hear that mission. <laughs> <laughs> I'm turning in the X now. <laughs> he didn't come in, so he came. well, that was the other but, twenty fans you didn't yes. charge. But uh, <laughs> but he also wouldn't come near the the other side, the team sideline, because he doesn't want to take anything away from. Those coaches so and what they've done it's the, it's 
he he's a little modest about himself, but he's had such an impact on that program, and and a lot of these coaches and players have done a tremendous job um, yep. this year to do these things. They're, we're we're proud to be part of that coaching tree. It's so. awesome. Yep. Good good stuff right there. I think I mean I I just think it needed to be recognized. I mean I know Coach Portel's put a lot of time and energy into that, you know, and and uh, so Tappy had hope and hopefully they can bring home a state championship. That'd be awesome. Yeah, that would well, be awesome and, for and the you county. Talk about for the, burning the this, candle at both ends for for Coach Portel. So you've got Jamboree that you already had. You're going to have a game on well, on Friday. Then you're going to turn around and and then play. I think a game on Friday night and then turn around and play another game on Saturday. I mean. It, he's here, there, and everywhere right now. And then turn around and play games the following week. So it's uh, yeah, Jason. I don't want to hear about how much sports you have to coach. Portel's coaching like four different games in two days. Good for him. Okay. Two different sports. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. This come from the guy who coaches one sport. That's right. <laughs> hey, I, hey, I've got. I've got, hey, I've got it, it could be this one. He's got a point. He's got. A, what's that? <laughs> come on. Jeez. <laughs> 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 Hey, but, need your uh, film. Need your film. So, uh, I got it already. Film, right? I got it. <laughs> but right, speaking it. up, speaking up, so it's that time for, for Jamboree season for high school basketball in the state of Missouri. You guys excited? You got top uh, I'm, head I'm coaches excited. here? You know, I, I my biggest thing, uh, you know, I, I'm just excited to – for our kids to play against somebody else, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, we, I'm, you know, granted, we, we're, this year we've had less practices than we've ever had before we probably play a game, uh, but uh, you know, I think that the biggest thing is, is you know, you can only see so much against your your teammates because you know, they know everything you're doing, um, and so you want to get it out there and just kind of see how they tail up against uh, you know different opponents and different ideas and different thoughts. I mean, Coach Jarvis has already played in a jamboree, and, and it's kind of probably can can attest to that. I think he saw a lot more uh, playing against other teams last night than, than he has in, in practice in the first two or three weeks because he was able to see what his kids could can and can't do, um, you know, against opponents and things that they may need to focus on a little bit more in practice or, or vice versa. So, Well, it, it I think was very helpful in directing uh, practice today. I bet. On some stuff that we had to uh, – we need to work on and to help us improve what exactly for the year. That? Huh? What exactly is that? Well, I I'm mean, you know, you. I mean, we're, we're pretty <laughs> vanilla. We're pretty vanilla. I mean, you already seen the I, film. I mean, I, have, I haven't I, watched it a bit. I have not. I, mean, I have not seen the film yet. Yeah. Well, so. well I can tell you, you know. The, Are you, you going to give me a sky report? No, I can. No, I can, I, <laughs> no I can, more. Here's what I can tell you. I Later. can tell you that. Um, you know, being around the the boys program at, at Herculaneum now for this is would be year seventeen that I've been there, and, and I can tell you that in the seventeen years, this is probably one of the most athletic boys basketball teams that hey, I've let's, let's I've down, seen man. around. And you know, and the reason why I'm saying that is sandbag, uh, I'm not sandbagging anything. It, it's it, hard that, to talk about your own team, but sure it is. I mean, I agree. I felt good after the jamboree. Uh, I, I have it's... not felt good after a jamboree before. So, so let's put know. this out there. We, we talked with you about football. So now that we have all the kind of the, the basketball coaches here, talk about what's maybe different from football to basketball in terms of jamboree, maybe even go from softball, baseball to basketball in terms of what you are looking specifically at, at, a, at having a jamboree. And then what do you do? Because I know we... Riley, we've kind of talked about this over the years about how our philosophy. I think you guys are kind of different in in the things that we do, and I don't necessarily know if it's boys or girls. But tell us, what do you when you go into a jamboree? Obviously, you want to play somebody besides you know the, the same kids from your same program on a day to day basis. But what are you looking for in your jamboree? Go ahead. <laughs> wow, and go. go. Well, I, well, I, I didn't I'll, know if I'll you were asking me or him first. All, so of, I'm just... all of the head coaches. Well, I, I mean, what I'm looking for is I want to see what, what kids gel together well. Uh, you know, then I also want to see what uh, kids maybe gel well against other things, maybe some things that they don't gel well against and maybe some things we need to kind of put a little bit of emphasis on. Uh, you know, and so we'll rotate in uh, kids. You know, we'll put in some different rotations um, throughout the entire night, just because we want to see what k kids play well together, maybe kind of give yeah, an idea I mean, of that. And I, I try to rotate. Like we, 
We started, I start, who I think should be our starting five at this point in the season, which could change at any time. Uh, rolled them out there in the beginning, and then I had another five that I just threw out there after them. Uh, that I did that in the second game. The first game, I kind of subbed one at a time or two here or there and mixed. I mean, I had all kinds of different groups out there. I got to see some combinations of who's going to work together uh, what kids may work better with others. Uh, I got some kids that have never been in the program. And so that uh, most people know the DJ Johnson kid that played for us in football. He played a quarterback, wide receiver, running back. Uh, this is the first year he's playing basketball. And uh, found some things out about him last night. And uh, that's going to be a good addition, I think, for us. And uh, I had a transfer in from Festus that uh, – played for me for the first time last night and uh so you get some of those things and then you see hey i've been practicing on this are the kids doing it now like yeah. are they doing it against this other team and uh I, I mean i saw some good things out there and then i saw some things we had to work on especially defensively that uh we needed to work on and uh you know it's it's good to get out there against another team i think you also want to you want to I mean, Coach and I, like he had said, I, you know, when we played against each other in a jamboree, um, you know, we we try to throw some things out that maybe we wanted to, hey, we're not very comfortable playing man-to-man consistently, so we want to play man-to-man against uh, against you to see kind of how we do. And I ask him the same thing, hey, what do you want to do, what do you want us to do to help you um, and, help and your I, kids? I, I, you know? I've never been in a jamboree where it's been like that. I don't, I don't go to Coach Moss at Northwest and say, hey, dude, I need work on that. I, I mean, I just, I would rather my kids not know and me not know what's going to come. And, I, and, and then, that's and then we got to adjust. Because mm-hmm. uh, come Friday, I don't know. I have a clue what yeah. Bayless is going to run, except maybe what they ran last year. So I want my kids to have to adjust on the fly, have to adjust to adversity, have the ups and downs. Uh, you know, we came out against Northwest, and we're up 10 to 2, like right. that. And then ended up at the end of that quarter, it was 10 to 5. Then it, towards the end of the game, it was a two point game. Then it ended up being tied. And then we pulled it out in the end. And uh, you want to have experiences that you're going to have to use in games to happen during that jamboree. And uh, we did it a little different. They kept score all the way through mm-hmm. all three quarters. A lot of times they race it after every quarter. Yeah. That's, that's uh, it. Now, I, I mean, know. I would rather want to keep I like Moss said, hey, you when we were playing Afton, because we played Afton first, he's like, after the first quarter, he was like, hey, do you guys? I go, yeah, I'd rather just keep the score the whole way. You now, maybe because I'm different. You're different. I'm different. And, <laughs> and you're going to say that, I don't know. No, that that if you follow forward, yes, you're different. Go I, I, <laughs> you're a girls coach. You're different. I mean, wow. that's it. Let's, man. but go oh, ahead. Oh, man. Oh, wait, you're but a guys it, coach now. Yeah, My bad. My bad. Not. Anyway. You, but I, I just don't put a lot of stock in the whole winning and losing at Jamborees because to me I didn't say coach, anything about winning. I know, and but that's all you hear it on the message boards, you hear about oh well this team won or that team won. It it's a jamboree and it and philosophically I look at it as I could care less. I wanna know what we do, what we do right. I also I look at it as maybe you two are in a position battle. Maybe you are better offensively, you're better defensively. Well, who's going to start for me? Who's going to do more things the right way? That's what I'm looking for. I want to say, like you talked about, are we gelling as a, as a, as a team, well, as a five? And I'm going to argue that because Go I'm going to say, if you're a historically bad team mm-hmm. and you go into a jamboree and just get your butt handed to you, mm-hmm. and that's what your kids are used to, and that's what your kids have had happen for three and four and five years. Mm-hmm. And then that starts again. Here we go. We went to the jamboree and we got our butt kicked again. Uh, we, you know, I, 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 I want to walk out of that jamboree going, not necessarily winning or losing, but feeling good about what went on there. I don't. I, last year we went down to St. Jen and we just got our butts kicked. Mm-hmm. And my kids, I could just tell. And they and we weren't ready. I mean, say Jen pressed us full court. Uh, we weren't ready for it. And this year we walked out of the jamboree, and my kids are positive. Uh, we had a lot of positive experiences at the jamboree, and uh, you know, 
you may look at it like that as a coach, but kids feed off of being confident. I, I've just noticed more and more as I've been a coach, it has a lot to do with how the kids feel more than their skill level sometimes. Mm-hmm. And, and when you're a historically bad team, or and I'm not saying we were historically bad. I mean, we've been. I, I think we've gotten. You know, we haven't got quite to that 500 mark yet, and that's what we're trying to do at least, and hopefully get better than that. And it's hard to dig your kids out of that mentality. And yep. I was so happy that the football team did what they did this year because those kids got a taste of winning mm-hmm. some football games. Mm-hmm. And I have a lot of those kids on my basketball team. And since I've been the head coach at Herky, our football team has not been very good. Mm -hmm. And we won five games, which is still, you know, mediocre to most. But we won five games. We won a district game. And those kids are taking that. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we can build on that. Uh, And, I mean, it's like anytime you play another opponent, you want to I want to win. Mm Mm-hmm. I want to win. I want to win when I'm playing my kid on a video game at home. I want to play. I, I hate losing. So I would argue, no, I, I like coming out of one of those feeling good. Well, I, I think the, the big difference is, you know, uh, it's the approach um, of what you take to your kids. I mean, if you take the approach to your kids that, hey, um, you know, our focus is this or our focus is that in a jamboree, um, then, then you're going to find that success. You're going to find that win or that loss in your mind and for their mind. So, uh, I, I mean, I'm always a, a firm believer that, <clears throat> you know, especially in a jamboree, you, you've got to put in your kids' minds what your expectations are in that because if you don't have an expectation for them, um, I think they don't, they don't treat it as a competition. They don't treat yeah. it as that. So I, I think that's the big thing um, and from my standpoint. But, I, you know, you're on the other side of the spectrum. You don't have a jamboree this year. You're not playing nope. in a jamboree. So, uh, you know, what, what do you take away from <clears throat> not being able to play in a jamboree so, compared to whatever the Or was it by choice you didn't want to? I, I, I did it by choice. Um, and the reason was is I mean, we, we probably could have we probably could have gotten a jamboree. It might have been a late thing. We, we actually had reached out. We reached out to a couple teams. Uh, kicked it around. We actually kicked around hosting one, but we weren't sure if the football team was going to play for a district championship. There was a chance, and then our soccer team, we felt like they had a pretty good run. So I'm losing. About I figured that was a big part of it. Sure. I, so I mean, you're 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 taking at least probably what uh, eight eight kids away from my varsity team, right there between both programs. Well, and, and, and that's what goes back to what we talked about a couple shows ago about. There is no time between sports. No. So, so b- before we would ever jump on that, I, I, <laughs> ma- I made that decision. Just I, no time. I, I go, you know, in, instead of having, you know, maybe playing somebody who's going to thump us, which we get nothing out of with some kids who are m- going to be coming not off the going, bench. Or not even going to be varsity players. Right. Because you're and, just filling Yeah, you're just filling right spots. Yeah. And to go down and let's say you're playing, uh, playing a team, and mom and dad want to come watch, and they come and see their kid out there starting, and the next thing you know, they're barely getting to play. Well, you were starting them, but they don't understand that we're missing literally uh, 75% of the team. And your kid's playing because we're filling spots, as, as Zach said. So I don't even want to put myself in that situation. We, once we get everybody back, we have plenty of kids. We can scrimmage our, our kids together. It's not going to be the same. I agree. It's one thing about playing the same guys over and over and over again. But to me, I felt like it was the best move for us, considering that, as you said, we don't have the time in between that if any of your fall sports make a deep run, then you're kind of like, okay, well, I'm just going to sit back here and wait. Come on. Come on. Yep. And I'm excited. Again, I was happy for the football team for the season they had. I'm extremely happy for our soccer team for the season they are currently having and hope they do well. But but, it, but it's hard deep down not to go, man, We you know what? I got five less days. Yeah. I got basically six less days with my football kids. We're, we're going to have kids, and we again, we have a senior retreat that, that's coming up next week where I'll have, be missing seniors, seniors that are playing on the soccer team. They're going to have two practices before we play our first game. Yeah, that's Dude. rough. It's tough. I mean, good thing good thing that we run the flex because <laughs> God forbid 
We have nobody to put it in the offense. That. Running the flex. Nobody Keep forgets going. that. Don't tell. Okay. Nobody that. forgets He's that. He's on the other team. Okay, sorry. So we we are fortunate. Everyone that will get me filmed by them on that. <laughs> by, uh, okay, cause except for him, except which for is him. so stupid. But you're, anyway. you're welcome. <laughs> if you want hey, it, if you, you want it, I'll send it to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I think it's time to go to the commercial. Cut. <laughs> hey, do you need another coach on your staff? Yeah, we sure do. I'll take anybody who wants to come there. I, so sure. We will, too. I, I mean, you know, I, I, I'm not even close to his numbers, the coaches. Or his. <laughs> one, two, carry the one. We did add some. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. I know. I even filled Crump's spot. I'm sure you did. I did. <laughs> well, we... We'll go ahead. Kevin's playing some music here. We'll take a short, short break, and then when we come back, we'll do we'll do some debatable topics. It works great. I'm good at debating. You good at? You know, you're watching the coach's box. We'll see you in a second. Solutions will attack your bacteria, mold, viruses, and even help with dust in your house. They install easily in less than 45 minutes, and it's invaluable for less than your life. If you're interested in any of the products they offer, you can home by SMCI and call today at 636-337-4444 or email them at service at homebysmci.com. If so, contact Stacy Miller at Berkshire Hathaway Home Service. Stacy works with first-time home buyers and even savvy sellers. She also specializes in working with investors, lenders, and title companies. Stacy will be there every step of the way. Contact her today at 314-606-1007 or visit stacyzmiller.com.
Time to eat in? No problem. Don't feel like cooking? We'll do it for you. Need wings for your party? TJ's Bar and Grill has got you covered. TJ's is a local mom and pop establishment in Eaton, Missouri, known for their own homemade pizza sauce, barbecue sauce, and their famous TJ's wing sauce. Open seven days a week, they are family friendly, biker friendly, and hopefully home. Come by or order by phone with your credit card at 636 475 3648. TJ's Bar and Grill. We're glad you stopped by. Selling a home, let Kelly Kaufman move. Kelly Kaufman, real living gateway real estate, brings a fresh approach, honest, innovative, and aggressive, and young team with experience for all her customers. Whether you're a first time buyer or experienced seller, Kelly Kaufman has the tools to deliver the best buying experience in the industry. Give Kelly a call today at 314 221 6090. One year coming. All right, and oh. so we are oh. we are back here. Wow, oh. and uh, <laughs> we're back. Pow, we back. <laughs> so here we go. hey, we we've got some ideas when we want to do some debatable topics, and so <laughs> we well, let's try and keep it local. Let's try and keep it at the high school scene, and I think I'm going to actually be on the fence on this one. I oh think, I, I think oh it gosh. could go. Yeah, I know, we go. I know, hey, hey, hey. On the fence. He's not going to so. fall forward. No, 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 I'm stand up. Go. <laughs> anyway, so you have this concept in high school, in, in, in Missouri high school sports called the championship factor. Mm. And so. It's great. My, did, you, did you see the thing on CMO about it? CMO? Okay. No. Uh, Posted by Jeff Ketcherside. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. Jeff Ketcher side's the one that started the conversation, yes. Okay. Yes, and then he did. backed out pretty quick. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just wanted to start it, then just went back and won. I, I thought it was good. I thought it we needed, have to, you have it was, to tell hey, it tagged. Good. I was not answering anything. So no. the the question is, championship factor goes into the the conversation for success for private schools. And so, if you are successful winning districts postseason, um, as, as Kevin's shaking his head over here, but, and you can talk at, at some point, you will get to talk. Uh, the more successful you are, whether it's district title or further on in the playoff state championship, you will get moved up a class based on your success. Mm -hmm. And so, the debatable topic is: Do you think it should only apply? To, to private schools, or should you open that up to every school? Go ahead, two. public school guys. Public. Three against two. That's okay. We'll I, win. I told you. I'm a, I'm, I can see it. Either way, go. Go ahead. I personally think that, um, you know, the, the moving up two classes, I think, is a bit much. Um, I think one class is probably legit. Now, I also believe that, uh, you know, that not necessarily the 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 championship packer point system probably doesn't need to go back six years because he, here's the way I look at it if you have a, a good class that comes through and they're a four-year class so they they're they're a good group of kids that are four years in the they got a now the two years after they leave those kids are behind them maybe not as good are taking the punishment of that good group that maybe can't compete at two classes up. So I think as far as that goes, the six year is too long. Depending, think, on, depending on what sport you're talking about, those first, you're saying four year class, not a lot of classes in a lot of sports, not a lot. I mean, when I look at football teams, you don't have freshman football players out there whooping varsity players. Butts. Not normally, so, but I mean. So, so then small should schools. it be. So it should be sport to sport, because as you said, there's not many freshmen competing in football, and at a high level to the point where you're getting points. I just don't think you go back six. No, years. at a six small school there is. I think six years is I too mean, long. Four, I think, is um, 
the the max that you should go, and and I honestly believe that it should be three. It, 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 now, Kevin, you you have experience with this because I haven't won as many things as you. Mm-hmm. It, you've won what? How many district championships? Uh, five. Five. He's won five district championships, and your kids this year were quote unquote punished, or they had to deal. Let's let's let's, let's make it a little more PC. You had to deal with the effects of the Misha championship factor. From okay, so you you've explained this to me. There are kids that were in what grade? My freshmen were in third grade and my seniors were in sixth grade when we won a district title in 2015, which would have been that first year of that six. We won a district title. We were five and 15. We were the number one seed in the worst district in the state. And we, and there were the district that we came out of to play had four 20 win teams in it. Uh But because we were geographically placed into the importance of this district to win a title, these third graders from 2015 got pushed up to class three. And and it it really is not that big, it'll roll off, we'll move back to class two next year. I just, my main problem is not the six years, it's not the points, it's like, if you're gonna make district titles that important, that it's going to increase and lower. You cannot use geographic region as the basis for setting districts. Agreed. Because you're but going to. But is going to say they are because of money. I, I I get that, but then you can't you can't say one thing and then do another. You can't rob Peter to pay Paul. So you, just you can't. can't. Yeah, they can. They're Misha. That's yeah. what they do. You wow. can't say. That's what they do. You can't say that districts are so important that they lead to changing classifications for schools. If you are not going to at least even them out and make Rob and Peter to pay Paul, I had to pay twenty eight dollars so my family could come watch me coach against St. Mary's. That's ridiculous. I agree. And we're <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> well, I mean, I, no, it was an away game, and Misha charged seven dollars a pop, no matter what age you are or what, whether you're a teacher or. I mean, it's well, garbage. They, here's the thing: is it, it is. doesn't, it doesn't it matter. The cost to change and do the districts differently. Let's say instead of instead of having seating that a district of eight, two different districts of eight, maybe so, just seed sixteen. Seed the sixteen, and then you have two separate tournaments. So it's a, it's not perfect, but it's a little bit more even. It doesn't change anything that Misha does because all Misha pays for is the same number of officials yes, sir. and two wooden cutouts of the state of Missouri for each one, mm-hmm. which doesn't change. They pass the cost on to the schools. And I'm telling you, many schools would probably be okay with making the districts competitively more fair if it meant a little bit more travel. And in the whole scheme of things, outside of a couple of things, it's not going to be that much different. Well, we, we changed it this year in cross country. So we went to a, uh, a sectional basically a, a, a district but we, we combined two districts into one district and so there was four winners out of the district that got to advance to the state four, four schools four schools got to to advance to the state um, they only gave out first and second place trophies but those at last year were two different districts mm-hmm. and both teams got first and second trophies so they Michigan got it out of spending money on two trophies Oh well, hell! There isn't that much now, damn money. Well, it, it was they, to somebody they, because they, they made a point of it. They did the same thing when football went from fourteen districts mm-hmm. to eighteen districts. Oh, okay. So, to use a n- different model, then if you go to Tennessee, you can the top two teams in those districts make it to the state tournament. They just get reseeded in a four-team uh, sectional. I guess I don't remember what they call it. Pods. Pods or whatever it is. And so you have the winner of your district playing the loser of another district, and then the winner of another district playing the loser of this district, and then they play. So I don't know. I, I think again, this is we're getting a little off topic of the championship factor. I, I think I think there's another way to do it, and not necessarily in the stupid point system that football does. Just because separate it's them. Dumb. Just separate them. No, don't do it. Public and private. No, you can't do that. Why? 
Why you not? can't do it. Why not? I, I get, I'll, I'll tell you exactly. Okay, what hang on. You, you need you need to definitely do this because I'm def. I, I've I've heard this and it's it's legit. <sighs> the, the former AD in me is going to come out of this. <laughs> so here, here's why here's why you can't just separate. There's only 70, 70 non-public schools in the state of Missouri. Seventy. That's it. Okay. That's one classification. Seven of them are in the St. Louis area. That's one classification, basically, because you have to hit a hundred, right? Yep. So you don't have to. That's the kicker. You. What I'm saying is, to. but, but then you're changing. They're they're not going to go down to two classifications or three for class. So then that puts the St. Piuses, the 290 students, right. competing with the St. Louis U highs sure and the Vianis in the same classification. But here's that, where that's I would where say, that gets a little but difficult. Here, well, then we need the, the, what, uh, they all need the same rules. Then. But here's what I would say then: if you do that and you separate it, then you then you open it up and you say you make it the Wild West and you can recruit. Well, yes, I, I'm telling you, if they separate, uh-huh. there's a pretty good chance that, and they'll say it'll never happen, right. but the private schools will go Wild West martial law on this and start recruiting anyway. I was in a meeting at Misha where a very large St. Louis single gender uh, athletic school's athletic director, right. who's also one of their prominent sports head coach, mm-hmm. and he goes, if you do that, I'm going to... I will go down to, he goes, I'll, I'll go down to Park Hill Central, mm-hmm. I'll sit in at their middle school practice, yeah. I'll give all of them scholarships and a free bus ride every day That's fine. Park Hill Central. That is perfectly up. fine. And he goes, I do you want Why that Why is it not fine? If that, not parent, if that parent wants to, then it's perfectly fine. I'm, 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 not, I'm not saying that, but this whole discussion right. could be more easily fixed. If we just, if you keep the championship, fa- I'm just saying, but because if you, you do districts differently and you see them and make them more competitive, because I think it's a little bit better setup. I'll bring it back to the. If champ- we all live I by will, the same rules, then it would be okay. I agree with that. I will bring it back to the championship factor. We're now all live by the same rules. <laughs> I'm supposed to be changing cameras here, and I'm. I, I'm going to bring it, it, it back to the championship factor, and I'm going to say this: I'm perfectly fine with the championship factor because. You're going to say, argue small school. I'm going to say it has nothing to do with quantity. It has everything to do with quality over quantity. Mm -hmm. Here's why I'm going to tell you. Let's use Valley football as an example. Everybody says, oh, why did they jump two classes? Well, they were ranked second in the state all year, okay, in class three. They were ranked number two all year. That's quality over quantity. I saw this on the message boards. When you have 50 boys Ranking or whatever, but here's what I'm going to tell you, though. When you have 50 boys or however many they have and 47 out of the 50 boys play football, you don't get that in a public school. You don't get, you don't no. get near that in a public no. school. So it's quality over quantity. And that's why I say championship factor is perfectly fine when you look at, when you look at a program. I'm sorry, there's... As great, and this is a thing because Valley is great. They have no business playing Class One. They destroyed St. Jim twice. That's a Class Three school. Now, should they have been ranked number two all year? You can debate that all you want, but they don't need to be playing Class One. They have too much quality to be playing that. But, but how how do you effectively rate that year in and year out? The fact that they win. No, now, okay, okay. No, 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 no. Okay, yeah. Class three yeah. and four schedule before go play class three and four teams for a couple of years and if you have sustained success, then you stay where you need but to be. But as soon as but as soon as those kids aren't there. They're always there. They're, okay, Valley. you're talking about it's, one stinking place. We're not talking about CBC's every. CBC is always there. D- D- is always there. It's not there. all. Okay, always, okay. Well, you know what? It's not always that. It's not always at St. Pius. Okay, it's just not. Okay, it's not always at Saxony Lutheran. It's not. So you got. You, okay, you're talking about like these blue bloods. We'll use that. I like that. Blue blood private schools that get these kids but, all the time that might have questionable ways of how they do them, except for Valley, because those kids are just. They just all keep, have questionable ways. But do they? Hold on. But I'm not saying publics it. don't either. You. You're I'm saying say we don't blood. live by the same rules, though. No, we did not. Look, like, no. so all the Pius. private schools were practicing, and we were being told as a public school we couldn't. Well, you know what? No, no. That, that's, that's a county health that's thing. That's a county health thing. 
That is not the same thing. That's the public schools deciding to do something, and we weren't even invited to the meeting. That yeah, there you go. I'm not just talking about you. I'm it was, and right. then we had half the state practicing, okay. and a half the other state not practicing. Well, okay, well that's that's and, not a public private thing. But public private, you, you don't live by the same rules as we do, and, and, I, and you don't have to educate every kid. No, you don't have I'm to so do. You don't have. I'm not to pick with you. I know for a fact. I don't actually have that big of a problem with the championship factor. I have a chance when you say quality over quantity. Mm-hmm. Five and fifteen district titles okay. are not quality. I understand so, that. So but that look at volleyball. Volleyball, they they have won time and time again. They won a district this year in what class four. So there's quality there. They need to be playing class four there's because they won. And they there's no bias. They welcomed the move yeah. to class four to compete against some of the bigger schools. Yeah. But, but, but I have a problem with punishing. If you're going to use districts mm-hmm. as a that's your measuring team, stick. That's my, if you're going right. to use districts as points right. to accumulate to move up three district titles in six years, mm-hmm. if you're going to use that, you cannot just geographically lump schools together with no comprehension. So, so, what's so, so if a private school is a girls' basketball, let's say there's a girls' basketball, small girls' basketball school in southeast Missouri, and they get into that that, that district where there's... there's Delta, 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 Scott they County. Point, you know, they get a point for mm-hmm. when they just show up because right. there's no other one. Is that fair? So no. So so so. So 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 to so to go with Kevin's point, and I agree with this. They sh- if they're going to do the championship factor, and again, I think it should be across the board. I think it should be public and private because again, public schools, when they voted on this, I think they were kind of like, oh shit, we're giving the we're 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 hurting ourselves because it has hurt public schools when you all of a sudden bump a good private school team up. Or you would have been in this, this this class, but somebody bumped you, and now you're up because you had. They're going to fill that bracket, and that's it. They're not going to go one school over. This is this is the main teams, so you're out. So that that hurts schools. Now, if they're going to do the the championship factor, and it, I don't care if it's public or private or whoever you want to put in there, charter doesn't matter. I agree with you 100%. You cannot count districts. You cannot count districts as a point system. I would say at best, at best, it would be a quarterfinal visit for that first point. At best, because now you're at least one of the top eight. Top ten schools. Yes. You're, you're within the top ten. When you're talking about districts in basketball, how many districts are there in basketball? 16. There's 16. In 16, when you divide that by the 99 or 100 schools or whatever, you're not always going to get. Think about the district. No offense to any of these schools, but Brentwood, Crystal City, Crossroads, Crossroads, Ellsbury. Within the last three years, by record, not a great district overall. Not. My record. If you you would say, we're going to put the championship factor, you mean to tell me that you're going to punish... Crystal City for winning the district in that district when they had to play the winner of as as Kevin alluded to like somebody like Oran Advance or or St. Vincent those are or Valley you're talking about four schools that had 20 wins Mm -hmm. and you had Crystal or Brentwood the year before that was under 500 before they won before they started district play so they got their they over 500 bam and they went a district and they went a district now Good for them. There's nothing wrong. I'm not taking anything away. You, you sometimes you, it's great to be lucky than good or, or whatever. You you ended up in that spot. I'd love and to be And we would lucky. all <laughs> like that opportunity to get in the state tournament. But to but to but to evaluate the success of a program based on again geographic location is about as dumb as wiping your butt before you poop. Okay, it doesn't make any sense. Why not put them? Or, why not? Why not? Why not measure it? Oh yeah! Wait, wait. Are you tra- you guys trying to figure that out? How that works? <laughs> I said, or pooping after you shower. I mean, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> again, I agree with that. So, uh, why not just why not just say, okay, you're one of the top ten teams. There's your point. You're top eight. You're eight and better. Point. You made the semifinals. There's two. You see what I'm saying? I mean, that that would make more sense to me than just saying, Dude, well, you won your okay, district. You're saying sense Ding. and. 
Something that deals I with know, fish. I know. There's yeah, we're, we're all, all in the same. I think you take that all out of play when you go back. You don't go back six years because you take his point. I, I still think it is six a years good ago. Point. He had a team that was five and fifteen and got it placed into a geographical district that was not very good. But he was fortunate enough to come out of that district, and now he his kids got punished for six years. Oh, okay, that. Those kids hadn't even thought of playing softball. Well, here's here, here's and the way I don't, you look don't at think it. it don't, I don't think that it consists. The whole process is not fair to all kids. And it, uh, why are we here if we're not for all kids? It, it's what you say. You go back to the years because if if you say you got moved Stupid. up and then you you go in but see that's the other thing you look at your schedule your your regular season schedule doesn't change you're playing who you're playing but then when you get into when you get into the postseason you're only potentially play, it's only potentially one game it's only one game if you if you lose you're done mm-hmm. so i mean you're not are you really being punished it's just one game uh, yeah but you're but again okay if you it's, take it's it, not like oh wait you won now you got to go play schedule, right? all, if, all these class five schools for the entire thirty games. That's punishment. Now, if you want to sit here and say, "Well, we don't have an opportunity to win districts," would you have had an opportunity if you weren't in that geographical district to begin with? Oh, if you were moved over. Oh, 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 okay, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I mean, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make I'm it. Gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go with the football district, Valley, and St. Mary's. Mm-hmm. Valley's not in that same district as St. Mary's. Mm-hmm. They're meeting probably uh, the next after the district or quarterfinals, sectionals, they get or past semifinals. Park Hills. You know, and maybe they are. Maybe. I'm not maybe. saying they are. I mean, I'm saying is I mean, St. Mary's whooped them as bad as they whooped us. That's why I said the rankings doesn't mean jack squat because there's no way that Valley was the number two ranked team in the state in class mm-hmm. three. But but the same point that I'm making is maybe they were off of who they played and what their outcome of their regular season games were. Yeah, they might have been, but did they line up correctly? And it's all luck. I mean, it is really all luck when you look at the district how lines up and how, how, how it all puts to play. And we've rubber talked bands. about it, the rubber band method, you know, or the dart on the wall and wherever it hits is where we're going. So, like, I don't think that Pinata. it justifies. You know I what mean, I said happened, so. <laughs> but I, I don't think that it justifies a fair system for all kids and no that's why we're here we're here as a educator to make it fair for all kids right am i not is that why we're in right in, in the education field is to help, to help all kids help. but i go back to we're not doing that I, I go back to the championship factor i think that should be applied to the public schools as well because go back to when we just brought up brian allen's group at maplewood when they when they went to the final four one state and all that those guys should have been up afterwards, after they won, and then the next year. I mean, they were good enough to go play up. Why? Why is it? Were they I don't offer understand. Maplewood? Sorry. No, but what? you know, he asked for the offer of Maplewood. But my thing is, once Maybe. again, it's it's quality over quantity. Why would you not? If, if I have an awesome team that has a chance of winning a state title, I'm not going to duck anybody when it comes to moving up a class i'm not going to sit here and complain and say oh we should still be class one or class two no if we're good enough like i want to move up because yeah. that means that much more and we're yeah, but we at a school we, that size that you're talking about it was the same as our as, as us because they were class three or however you want to call it and once again it, it's no different than south iron boys when they go back and say let's put vishan on the schedule or cbc or whoever that they went and played last year in their non-con and they did really well. I would venture to guess, I mean, when they go out and obliterate everybody at the Park Hills Christmas Tournament, I would venture to guess they probably compete in Class 2, Class 3, and Class 4. That group for that year. So why not from the year before when they, made, when they went to where it they is go too, to the, it, But it's, it's not that easy to, to like he's saying, point. how are you going to just, I mean, Okay, so this year now they're going to go up. Oh, well, this year they're not good enough. This year they. I mean, how do you? It's you can't do that amongst seventy schools. In, I don't think anybody's. I'm not disagreeing with the fact that we do have some inherent 
um, advantages as a private school. I'm not going to disagree with that, and I don't think anybody would say that it's not the case. Right. Uh, and I'm also not minimizing anything that we've won. Those girls that year that went 5 and 15, they worked their tails off to mm -hmm. win that tournament. Win that. Sure. We got pushed up to Class 3 this year. We had a chance to win a district title this year. We didn't play well enough in a semifinal game to get past Perryville, who made it to the Final Four. I'm okay with that. I can live with that. Um, I just, as I think about it, I was like, there's way, there's, I think there's way too much emphasis put on winning too few district titles. Great. When the setup is as a geographic only. The six years is fine. Make it more than three points in six years. Well, then I, yes. And, and that's it. If you're really going to be successful, you're winning more than three times in three Success times factor in is more years. than three. I, oh, I, I still think you. you I still think because of the ge the geographic thing with districts, why not back it up into the state tournament? Why not back it up into the state tournament? Because honestly, if you're five and fifteen for four or five years in a row, and you somehow end up in the same stupid district and you win it, what what good is it going to be when you get bumped up a class? Dude? Okay, you're still five and fifteen. You're still you're still five and fifteen. You're just not winning the district. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. what I said. Yeah. Okay, but but it's same. All right, but again. Why, why do why do why do my kids who play whatever schedule, because we're this side of school, going to go and play against however many you know the, the kid the schools that have a uh, thousand kids in it, and we're we're going to play them in our district in in a state tournament because we got stuck in a crap crap hole district for however many years and we got yes. all these points. Yes. That doesn't make sense. You win your district and you lose that first game because everybody else is better, and all of a sudden it, 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 it's more equitable across the board, and you got your good teams. Okay, we got beat because and we're not good enough. Okay, we won the district. We got beat by Ava. That was it. Okay, we got one damn point from that. Right. Okay, but what if we were five fifteen? I, I still don't think it's. I, I don't. I don't think it's. I, I think it should be deeper in the state tournament. Sorry. Well, it, it, I'm sorry. The one thing I'll add to this is, in some schools, in some sports, we are as softball. We're already on the fence that any year we could be two or three, just based on our enrollment. Where are you two at? or three. So we bounce back and forth depending on which schools go to the spring softball, which schools uh. aren't, which schools are playing, which ones aren't. There's a chance that with those three points, if we'd have been in class three, we'd have had to play class four softball this year. Yeah. Which means we're in a district with. Hillsboro. We're in the district with Hillsboro, Festus, Farmington. You're already Windsor. in the conference. We're already in the you're conference. You're already playing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and, yeah, I would uh, I would say if, if you were a class one school and you have a class one schedule, then when you get bumped up to class three, class four, sure that's not equitable. No. But you're already playing these schools. You guys are griping or or we're making a big deal out of one postseason loss. It's not like you had. It's not like Misha said. Championship factor means you can only play class five and class six schools. Then I hear your point when you say about well, uh, that's not fair because let's be honest. If you're five and fifteen, you're pro my my senior year. Crystal City won state baseball with a losing record. Why? Because they were a class two school playing Festus, playing Herky, playing Windsor. We were still in that JCC, and you had to play those schools. But just because you're five and fifteen, you probably weren't winning state to begin with. So we're we're, we're talking one game. Well, I, I would like to be given an opportunity by Misha to be able to schedule schools so I can build for that. If I think I'm going to be class two. I'm going to schedule some other Class Two schools. Now, but if I don't find out until the day of my first game. That's another problem. I'm class oh, four. so you mean us finding out Friday what class we're that's in? I mean, you think it's weird? Man Just worms. in enough time to schedule your games for next year. That's a whole nother. That's that, a whole but that'll change. Debatable time. But that's going to change, change next year. You watch. It'll we, change. You watch. We are going to be north this year. I'm almost certain. And, and we'll, we were we'll southwest. With your enrollment, you guys might bump up to Class Four. We are already. We where are you there, there, buddy? Class four. I'm not calling in it. class four last year, so no, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, we were in class four. <laughs> I, I'm just saying. I, I was with Park. I was Park down Hills. south. So, so, so again, if you, okay, that's great. You're five and fifteen, and you're playing all these big schools. But then all of a sudden, you turn around and you're playing all these other small schools because that's your size. It's and not you, about size. It's about no, quality. It, no, no, no. It's, quality it is versus, about size. Quality versus quantity. No, 
This is a debatable How, why topic. Are you, why are you saying on, no? no? Would you hold on? Fine, on, fine. On, Would you go. rather have fifteen on your roster? That can't make a left-handed layup. I do. Or would you rather have five studs? Who are you going to win win more with? Well, the five. Well, studs? I'd rather have five studs. But if I have exactly. if I have if I have two thousand students versus five hundred to pick from, I'm that probably going to have more of a the chance. Case. That is not. How do you figure? Because we don't. You're live in telling a, me if I didn't have double the kids at my school, I wouldn't have better athletes. Uh, I don't want to put other schools on blast, but no, it's not a given. Not always. It's not a given. I, hey, I have more opportunities. County, within our county, do we not have some of the top I Missouri's take- top ten most in, uh, populated high school programs? Yes. How many times do we ever hear about them winning in the postseason? Uh, zero. Because there's other bigger schools that are better. Oh, but it's about how many kids they have in their school. I have a better opportunity to draw from. I've coached at schools where there's only about 20 kids in the class. You also played at a school that was class one, but because the community cared, you had quality over quantity. Because the community cared. But I have a better chance. Oh, you had... Uh, but you're going to have a better chance the more the numbers more, you yeah. bring in. You have a better chance and football, especially, you're going to have a better chance if you have more I, numbers. I'm playing the numbers game. It's a numbers game. You know how many linemen we had total in our whole program? But how many kids We had you like had nine. But you had how many kids in your school? We have like 500. Okay, so what about you on your schedule playing all these teams that are 200 and 300 that have more linemen than you? Your argument. Your they argument, have better quality, but you give me. But if you give me another five hundred kids, We're not, I'm gonna have another ten linemen. Not necessarily. How because, bull crap! Because it didn't work for you. <laughs> it did not work for you. You had five hundred kids. The school that only had two hundred kids had more linemen than you because they had more quality. You're, you can you add, double the number. You're gonna. You, they, you had their number. Their <laughs> number double. I love it. <laughs> what are you talking about? If I you double my that? number again, I'm gonna have. I cannot wait to hey, talk Zach, about this again. You just need to fall forward and be done with it. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> this is to be continued. <laughs> this is to be continued. <laughs> Folks, we are out of time. Are we? Yes. Do we? Yes. yes. Let's just keep going. Yeah, I mean, I, Rob true. Rhodes is right. We had two state championships across country. We did. But you ran seven kids. You eight. Doesn't matter you if you ran 107. You, had, you only seven. get to run seven kids, and only five of them place. All right. So again, well, we yeah, they had those other kids to compete against, huh? and if they didn't have the other kids to compete against, no. <laughs> all right. Like, big, you're, hey, you're done. Tell no, me to I'm shut up, host, or else. And I see you. <laughs> <laughs> And I have a microphone. And McVay said forward. And you're all forward. forward. Yeah, Nothing's <laughs> labeled over here. I don't know who to mute. Button. 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 Uh, uh, press buttons. Uh, but anyway, hey, to be con- that's to be continued of the next episode. To be continued. To be continued. To but be anyway, continued. hey, thank you. I think we've had one called that before, but anyway. Yeah, 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 I don't know. Well, that's okay. We, have, we need a new one. Blair takes out. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm yeah, you've been about. watching the coach's box. Uh, we'll see you next Wednesday night. Hey, basketball season Friday! Hey, and next basketball. Wednesday night, before basketball, before the coach's box, the Herculean Lady Blackouts will be taking on the St. John's Cats. Yeah, that's going to be a good one. 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 Yeah, that's going to be a good well, for all, all the guys here, we'll see you guys next Wednesday night. Have a great night. Thanks to hey, all our sponsors. Hey, still sucks. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll see you guys later. <laughs>